Yes. Talk, talk about the, the yield, the defects, and the area of the chain. Paper on the diet has the same defect. And the uh, uh, big problem is confidence. Then, if we can produce more food with more confidence from the baseball, we can reduce the price of each chip. Then, these are the equations. Um, The two prices. Um, so first, uh, we can capture which is the cost of the wafer divided by the die per wafer uh, multiplied by yield. How many die are there in the wafer? And the D peripheral area, like these areas. Reduce the from the total area of the And the diet and these are the explanations. We can see that for every company, uh, the area of dye, the area um, 
of dye are the, uh, is the is the same for every company. Different company, of course, have a different. So, in general, uh, the company will not tell you the other Reversely calculate their cheap prices. And you can know their market. Often decided by some physical laws, nowadays, so right? not the neighbor This are uh, related to the technology used or developed by that company. So it's related to the complex of, complexity of the manufacturing. So when we design a CPU or a GPU, of course we want to ma maximize the performance. But we need to also consider the cost, all the constraints, which includes the power, all different Power is related to the thermal. You have to consider the thermal, otherwise the chip will um, they'll have some issues. Nowadays, the thermal density of a chip is already very is already very high. And if you chip work always is always working at in at a very high temperature, then the reliability Besides the power, thermal reliability, you also need to consider the fabrication. The complexity of the design. And then when we talk about the performance, we, uh, we don't actually care about the maximum performance, but we care about the performance. So, in order to maximize. a lot of advanced space exploration. So, um, so in order to, you know, um, explore these constraints, different the company have a different uh, policy or strategies. Um, for example, AMD or uh, Dell or other companies just you know look for just find some Taiwanese company to do the fabrication. So they do not um, they do not worry about uh, how to fabricate a transistor anymore. You just give me that your alpha, you just give me your yield, and then I can calculate my prices. But again, 
Take off. Adopt another strategy. They just want to develop their own fabrication, their own design. Everything is, you know, for for Intel. So in this way, they don't need to release their design to some other companies. Um, they may achieve very fast, very short time. But again, uh, it's impossible for one company to have uh, all the advantages. So they may have a lower yield. I think that's the major difficulty they are facing now. Um, they just cannot uh, fabricate enough number of products or CPUs and then release to the markets. So uh, their CPU prices should be higher than uh, the other companies. <laughs> Uh, the so-called uh, the yes, this is a very good question. The so-called difficulty is that is that they cannot guarantee a higher yield, so they cannot lower the prices based on the periods equations. So these factors are, for example, you add some new architectural features. Um, that feature will definitely give you more power or less power, or, or improve the performance or degrade the performance. You may have a, you may want to add two features. The first one may improve some performance. Uh, on the CPU part, on core part, the second one may improve some uh, performance on the cache part. But of course, they will um, consume more power. So we have an introduced uh, and uh, I would like to remind you that by this. Uh, and uh, that they are the same, they are equivalent. So that's how the human to prove that law or that uh, Boolean algebra equation. So here I would like to uh, introduce how the computer do the, uh, do the simplification. By these um, equality, of course you can simplify it. Last case, so that last power consumption. And the computer or the software use so called K map to do the simplification. So here is one example of the so called K map. And the this. Because we have three variables and uh, three inputs and one output, um, totally we have uh, two, two, three, eight rows. Three rows have the different have all the combination of A, B, C, and then you can use that. Uh, this is the the other two, that is 
pick up all the rows generating at one. And then some, some error. So this is so called a kind of simplification. The K map is actually not form. So we do a four. Let me why zero 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 five. This term this is not one zero on what on the one zero. For the row of this point, so why the one one because we want to guarantee that only one bit So we just can't work. So after we have, you know, use some circle to cover all the ones. You can do that. So each large circle is a uh, logic component of a simplified equation. For example, this circle doesn't So when you draw the circle, you have to follow the same So first, use as last circle as possible to cover all the ones. Why? Because last circle indicates you have a last component in the final equation. And we cover only once. And the circle has to be, the size of the circle has to be a power of two. So you cannot 
power root six, five, four, two, you know, six, because six is not a power of two. And the circle should be as large as possible. A large circle, 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 a large circle. So if a variable has a zero and has a one in that circle, then you can eliminate that variable. And the circle may wrap around edge of the map. This column and this column of this row. So they can, and all the circles, can, and the circles can have overlaps, which means that a, a single one can be circled multiple times. So I will give you this example. We have four ones here. Three circles. Three circles. So this one circled by three packs. For this. That's not the largest circle. So this part A equals to zero and B uh, and one. Uh, A equals to zero and one. B equals to zero and one. So for this circle, we don't have B. And these two show the and wrap around the edge of the camera. When we uh, draw the camera, we can also don't care signal. The don't care signal can be zero or one. This symbol is not care value. So you can trade this value as well. And for this case, so the do not care symbol, uh, the value can be either one or zero. Any question about this? Yes. So um, this came at uh, 
is a four variable. So in this way, you can write back a one. But when you go get when you go from this point, only this piece, first of all, the same thing happens to not one zero or one. Next, we will introduce some numbers and the arithmetic. We described the binary number system again, our first of several classes. So here, I just give you some brief in, uh, review. Typically, uh, in everyday life, six number numbers, uh, 37. So you can compute it. Uh, uh, So on and so forth. You can also do that for a. a. So here is a table to indicate the same number uh, in different bases. One row in the same. So when we have a decimal number, how can we re, uh, you know, convert it to the base eight number? We can use this operator. We always use that. Eight, because this is the base eight. You always, And you can be back in the answer. Mm -hmm. 
我们肯定是第一的。From a decimal to another base. So, typically, when we write some application, when we write, when we do some programming, we And this is how you convert to that binary. Instead of uh, eight, here we And then the last, uh, remember, When we try to convert the binary, we say we can prove that we prove three. For example, the one zero one, which is a five. Why you know three digits? You know, because the maximum value of three digits is seven. Value you can have in the base eight system. So for the tax of eight base sixteen. Because the maximum value can be represented by four digits is a four binary digits, of course, is a um, 15. And 15 is a maximum number in the base 16 system. Then we will have some uh, arithmetic. The simplest uh, arithmetic uh, operation is, of course, the addition, integer addition. And these two numbers are in base 10 decimal number. And for the last position, we need to add carry and For the battery system, and here you also. So we introduce the half adder and the full adder. And this is a my example of the half adder. Yeah, half adder. We didn't we didn't uh, consider the carry in. We only have a carry out. The 
often hear. We cannot use half adder to build uh, multiple beads, multiple beads adder, because it doesn't have carry in. We can do that by only one beat required. But we have a three inputs, A, B, and carry in. Two outputs, carry out and sum. You can complete the and create a canonical form, some of the product, and then use KMAP to do the simplification. And then at the last, you can draw the circuits. So, this is the typical flow to convert a truth table to the circuit. Here we go, introduce uh, the uh, multiple bit adder, for example, a four bit adder. For, for the four bit adder, we just connect the four, one bit of adder together like this. This is so called a repo carrier. So you can see that they can choose And this the computation of and this path will be will decide your frequency. When you try to increase the bit bees of this adder, then you have to sacrifice the frequency because you increase the length of the critical path. So for this adder, it can only handle the integer. For the integer, we have a positive number. So we need the first bit to serve as the sign. If it's a zero, then it's a positive number. Otherwise, it's a negative number. So this is a positive number. The problem of assigned uh, number is that they have a double zeros. This is why we So for the tools complement representation, if it's a positive number, we don't have to do anything. If it's an active number, the first bit is one. Yeah. 
floor in the entire work. All the floor of the floor at the top of the floor. Final results for minor problems. So by the tool's complement, we solve the problem of a double two. Uh, I'm double zero. So in the truth complement the number system, we only have one zero. The sign that number to it is truth complement number. And this table should say value is what is um, what value um in time. And you, you treat them as sign the bit or unsign the bit. So this part, this, this part is from this. We have only four bits here. And this problem uh, is what you treat them as. Then the first uh, feature is the sign feature. So you can see that for this So this is the advantage of the um, two's complement. So the answer When I provide you a um, sequence of uh, binary beats, the first uh, question you need to ask me is uh, whether it's a truth complement to that or unsigned uh, value or just signed the value. So this is uh, when you try to write some C code, when you try to declare some variables, this is the first thing you need to think about. Whether you declare a uh, integer or long or unsigned integer. to another position which contains more beats, then you can extend the So the, the extending algorithm is simple. If it's a one, then you insert more ones. If it's a zero, then you insert more zeros. But when you try to copy a value from A, then you may have some, uh, some problem. Because 
when you try to copy it, right? And this problem is the so-called overflow. When you try to write some C code, of course, you may also have this problem. Thank you. Um, something seems like this to convert A to an integer. If A is a shot, this sentence has no problem. Why? Because you have to If A is a long integer, then you may have some all of those. So the truth complement uh, representation um, have a huge impact on the other design. Why? Because the subtraction can be uh, convert to converted to add a negative number. So the subtraction can be equivalent to a addition. You just add the truth complement the form of the the value. Like this. So one minus one will be equivalent to one plus minus one. And when you do the addition, of course, you will also will have some over floating problem. When you try to add a negative number and a positive number, there's no over floating. But when you add a two positive number or adding two negative numbers, then you may have those over floating. So there is a method of how you can detect the workflow. So overflow typically happen if for the most So when we try to design an adder, we need to consider the how to convert a number into its truth complement, how to detect the overflow, how to handle the subtraction. So the first step is to handle the truth complement, how to handle the subtraction. So if you need more is not this for the input of B, then this is a normal 
but if we want to use it to handle the subtraction, we need to not This is how you need to work. And I want to after least significant piece. So by signing on one to this, then I need four topics to actually the so it's complement the conversion. And this circuit is a fixed circuit. It can only use the to compute this. It cannot be used to do an addition anymore. So in order to do both addition and uh, subtraction, you just add more circuits. And use the last one, the current unit. So if I send a zero, if I send a zero, then I'm doing, a, I want to do an addition. Um, if I send a zero, then I want to. By selecting the original B and the sound of this current zero. And uh, if I sign a line. And then this is a subtract. And I'm not seeing to do that So but this is the final design of the motivated adder. Um, by adding some masks and uh, some uh, not gates and an XOR gate, we can uh, support both addition and subtraction and uh, the overflow detecting. And the carrying of the least to control whether you do the addition or the subtraction. When you have that uh, that piece of uh, adder, you of course you can use a uh, you know transistor to implement. Any question? Yes. yes. Which one? Early.
Any other question? I will post uh, this slide after this class. If no question, we can stop today. Thank you very much.